scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Are we together? So we give our daughters to foolish men who are anti-kingdom. We give our sons to wicked women who are anti-Christ and we, this, this combination produces nonsense. That's what is destroying our, our generation now. What we are reaping is the carelessness of 30 years, the carelessness of 40 years and if we do not correct it, let me tell you, the key is not insulting the government. There must be a generation that is addicted and no nonsense about God. Imagine a man getting married with his wife. Two of them pray in tongues, no problem. Two of them love God, no problem. As you give birth to your child, before wicked men hold him, you hold him as the father. Shakata bakataya. You are prophesying. What are you doing? I'm prophesying. Oh, stop that thing. Are you joking? That's how I married in the first place. Liba katobarataya. I call you blessed. You came out from my loins. I prophesy. You will. Everything is born after its kind. I will not love God and give birth to an armed robber. So you prophesy. If I'm your father, you should look like it. I'm showing you what lack of an encounter has produced in our society. To an extent, to an extent that if you are godly, they look at you as if something is wrong with your life. You have to explain godliness, something that should be institutionalized. Go outside of Zaria and see a young lady. If a young lady likes a guy, do you know how she attracts him? She starts singing bad and nonsense song, thinking that's what he likes. Are you getting the point now? So you sing all of the songs, thinking that by singing that, the guy will be attracted. Brother, shout no way. Abba. Abba. After reading Proverbs 31. Uh -uh. Ladies, you two shout no way. Don't bring shell and NMPC and deceive anybody. Do you have an encounter with Jesus? Listen, don't just say I have an encounter with God. God means anything. Do you have an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God? Let me prove to you that a man has an encounter with Jesus. You are unashamed about submitting to his values. If you have met Jesus, then you must be ready to submit to his values. Don't come and meet me with your philosophy, your ideology. You have not met Jesus. Listen, if you are here in Koinonia, if you are truly under this grace, you should have submitted to our way of doing things. So when you see somebody who is under this grace, you know at once the way you talk, the things you do, your passion for God. You can easily know someone who just came to Koinonia for the first time. Sometimes people come to share testimonies here and once in a while they can be a bit unruly or a bit vulgar and I see the reaction in people. It's like, no, 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 this is anti-coinonial culture. I can see it in you. So why will you go out with somebody who just told you he's born again? Born again is like an ID card. You can see it is visible. Okay. This, this, this thing this thing is I'm speaking from my spirit some relationships should be cancelled yeah, we cancel it in Jesus name I'm not asking you you will see what will happen from the prophecy because some of you are insisting I cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ 
destroy your life in the name of love. Love is not stupidity. Are we together? If you have had an encounter with Jesus, you must have the value system of the kingdom. Somebody comes to your house, everything he's saying is nonsense. Every wrong word. Do you know there are words you don't even have to be born again? societally speaking when you are getting to certain political positions they culture you when you when you are going to see the queen of england or they culture you you learn how to speak there are indices that show you have encountered god number one is your words not just dressing your words you speak nonsense you say anything anytime you have a come on please please all kinds of selection in your phone there is the one for when you are high, you, you just take it high. Then whenever you feel guilty, when you listen to messages on rapture, the coming of Christ, you just switch. Truly, you have not encountered Jesus. Don't laugh as I'm telling you this because it's a serious thing. You are not going to bribe God into fulfilling destiny. It has to be his way. Everybody say an encounter with Jesus. Now lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, anything trying to prove in my life that I've not had an encounter, drive it. Drive it far. Drive it far. Drive it far. Some of you need to make some calls to certain people. Call that gentleman and tell him, I love you, but Apostle just preached a message. I can't marry you. It can't work again. Sorry about the time I've wasted. It can't work again. It's as simple as that. Some of us who are about to get married, some of us who have children, it's time to get back, bring the cross to your house, bring Christian values to your house. Don't live a life that is vulgar. Don't raise children that are wayward. In discipline, no, sir. No, sir. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, you see, these are the things that should be discussed in church. I'm telling you this. Are we together? Yeah. How many elders are not born again? We just array the names of people. When did this one join our church? 1991. When did this one join our church? 98. If we give this person and don't give this, he'll be angry. Well, let's give him something. Are you seeing that? And then you now pick somebody just because he's old. He's the elder in charge of marriage counseling. You have never supervised what he's teaching the young people. And they come around and he's teaching nonsense. Do you think all this idea of beating wife, do you think people just invented it? Someone advised somebody and say, I did it, it worked. Do it, it works. Let's return Jesus to our lives. Oh. Let's return Jesus to our lives. You know what I'm saying is not a lie. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. If you are here today, at the end of the service, I'll make an altar call. Please, I want you to examine your concept of born again. If you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom, you need Jesus. Please, let's not argue this thing this night. You need Jesus. I don't care whether you are praying in tongues. No, sir. Are we together? Then your life, then your home. If my shirt has palm oil, you spill palm oil and you come with a white shirt and hug me and I hold you there. If you leave, won't you see some stain? Something about, show me what implicates you and shows us you have met Jesus. Don't just say you met Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Acts, in the Jerusalem council, when they saw Peter, they saw these guys, they knew they were timid, but they knew they had been with Jesus. They saw them when they were timid. But now they had seen their men of conviction. Let's sit down and continue. An encounter with Jesus, number one. Number two, now that we have cleared the way, I want us to sit down and talk now because this second point that I want to bring 
is really where the anointing is this night. So what you have even received now is an appetizer. Here comes the main course. May you eat it, every part of it, in Jesus' name. The second key, the second key to fulfilling your destiny, the second key to fulfilling your God-given destiny is the power of preparation and thoroughness. Write it down. The power of preparation and thoroughness. Preparation. Thoroughness. Preparation. Thoroughness. The power of preparation. The power of thoroughness. Second Chronicles 27, please, verse 6. Second Chronicles 27, verse 6. Second Chronicles 27. I like us to read it. It's projected. One to read. So Dotham became uh -huh, because he prepared his ways before the Lord. What was the secret of his exploits? What was the secret of his might? He prepared his way. And he did that in the presence of God. Under his supervision. Preparation. There is power in preparation. Write it down. There is power in preparation. We live in a time and a generation, especially for we young people. There is such an obsession for manifestation. Such an obsession for manifestation. Oh, let me prove I'm a millionaire by age 20. Let me prove I'm this and that. Let me prove there's nothing wrong with those things. But preparation preparation there is such an appetite of bringing our future into our today to prove a point and we destroy ourselves because we lack that ingredient of preparation what do you do during preparation number one what do you do during preparation number one you learn and understand the principles of the kingdom I call them the mysteries of the kingdom. That's what you do during times of preparation. Your times of preparation are largely times of learning and understanding the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. God has called me into an extraordinary ministry. God has told me I have an apostolic or a prophetic ministry. God has told me I'm going to the nations. Every time in my dream, I see myself changing people. Thank you, man of God. But what are you doing about it? Oh, I'm already buying suits. I, I, God has even shown me who my wife will be. That's not preparation. You are, that's carelessness. I, I assure you, you will not arrive that way. Preparation. This great ministry that God is giving me, what will it take? What do I know? Do I understand administration? Do I understand finances? This great ministry will be fueled by the word and by the anointing. Have I understood the mysteries? Listen, I want you to put your life on a project. Find out all the tools you will be using in the place of destiny and begin to source for them. Find out. There are many tools we need. You need the anointing in the place of destiny. Have you discovered how to bring it and keep it in your life and multiply it in your life? Number two, you need access to revelation, the working knowledge of the word of God. What keys do you have in your hand? Show me the keys you are accessing and I'll see whether you will get to your tomorrow. Finances. Our destinies are capital intensive. So they require a lot of finances. Show me what mentorship. Show me what book you are reading. Oh, apostle, I'm doing business. You will fail. That's not the key. The key is to receive knowledge. The key is to change your mindset. Not to offer products and services yet. That's the last step of the equation. We love manifestation. We love manifestation. I receive text messages all the time. And most of what people we, we, we like programs we like events conferences conventions someone sent me a text that he had a vision that we're holding six conventions in koinonia every year 
I said, shift that vision to the future. It's certainly not happening now. No. Convention for what? What is the meaning of the word convention? What is the meaning of the word conference? We abuse these things because we do rituals without revelation. Are we together now? Now is the time for building. Please hear me. Now is not the time for buying suits. Now is the time for buying books. Now is the time for buying the experiences of people. Now is the time for buying the pain of people. Buy their experiences. Preparation. I see many people who say they want to be men of God. I don't criticize them, but I'm just laughing. Because most people think all there is to ministry is to have the ability to throw somebody down. You are joking. If it was that easy, I guarantee you people would not be suffering. Benihin came around Nigeria. And you see the number of desperate people. We all flocked in waiting to receive an anointing. What does that tell you? It's scarce. Genuine power is scarce. Make no mistakes about it. Do you know why many people do not rise? We are comfortable with average. Average will only bring you in the scene but never distinguish you. Reward is for those who are distinguished, not those who are present. Is God speaking to someone? There is power in preparation. Let me tell you, when I started out in ministry, I didn't do many of the things many people are doing in life. No. No. That time, ask Jimmy, I used to walk with a bag. Remember my black bag? It had Bible. It had my books. The books, the speakings of God to my life. I would always walk with it. Those were the times you see people who buy tape or they go tape. Maybe Pastor Chris, any other tape, and they are small rechargeable. They will raise all their money and buy rechargeable. Not, not. Many of us seated here, you do not have any device for hearing the word of God. You don't. But you have clothes. You are a young lady of 19, 20. You have clothes of a married woman of 35. It's not wise. It's, it's a terrible, it's an extended version of foolishness. Are we together? You, you must take your destiny serious. This thing does not happen by magic. God is not a charm. He's not a genie. You've got to be serious. Some of us, as you keep your Bible like this, it's Friday that you pick it again. And yet you move around. I am, I, I, I hope to be called. Let's see which one. Uh, prophet, apostle, I will use pastor. You are dreaming. <laughs> are we together? One gentleman sent me a text during miracle service that he was coming. I said, who are you? He says, a man of God somewhere. I said, that's all right, you are welcome. Then he sent me a text. He says, he's informing me so that they'll put a special reservation for him in front. I said, my brother, this front seat you see is a testimony. The front seat is not a wish. It's a testimony. This is a testimony. You, you come and sit down. The seat will reject you. Have you seen that kind of thing? Where people, kings come and sit down, they say somebody dies. You don't sit down in a seat unprepared, sir. No. Preparation. I look at your prayer life and I know whether you are preparing. You want to be able to stand and preach? That's what kills a lot of men of God. They have not built that spiritual capacity. Don't you know that praying in tongues is like doing business? You are making an investment of strength into your future. A time will come you will not have the time to do 10 hours every day again. I can't pray for 10 hours every day. I'll be an irresponsible man of God because there are things to do. But there were times I would stay morning till night. I was building strength. He said, eat for the journey is far. Brothers and sisters, some of you, now is the time to lock yourself. You may look stupid, but you are building an extraordinary ministry. You are already in prayer band two weeks. You say they don't know me. Please sit down, Jare, and, and walk on your destiny. All this quest for recognition. Recognition. I think they should know me. No, sit down. Sit down. There is power in preparation. Let your competence announce you. Let the grace upon your life announce you. You cannot light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But you also cannot put a lamp that is not lit on top.
all this quest for manifestation please hear the voice of the Lord tonight that's not the way to do it that's not the way to do it someone asked me a question I think I don't know if it was a year or two ago and said apostle what are you doing with your life now I told him I said I am preparing for an extraordinary life he said preparing I said exactly you think this thing I'm doing is ministry this is industrial attachment my goodness my goodness my goodness this is not close to what I've seen in the visions of the Lord it doesn't even look like it compared to the koinonia God showed me this is a, a cave we are just waking up are you that inspired or have you started clapping for yourself and you want to build a camp around it affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Let me come to your house and your room. Show me your library. And I see how serious you are with knowledge. Books are very important. They are a communication of your value for knowledge. When you buy a book, you are not buying paper. You are buying a man's pain. You are, you are, you are, you are buying access to a man's testimony. People's mistakes at a platter of gold. For you to study and understand. There are many people who don't read. Let me tell you. How you know you are not preparing for your destiny is excessive idleness when i see a young man who is idle you must be lazy or you are not preparing do you know the urgency number one for most of us over 95 percent of us a mistake has already been made in our foundation i hope you know some of us got born again at 26 27 you are already behind at age 14 mary was giving birth to jesus you are 25 you are not born again you are already behind schedule. Why should you be roaming up and down? In broad daylight, you move around and you see people just taking sugar cane, gisting, and then they come to someone else's house. How are you? I was just strolling. Are you free? And then they are offended when you say you are not free. Everybody say, I'm going somewhere. Say it, I'm going somewhere. And now is the season of preparation. I will prepare. You want to be a millionaire? Let me see the preparation. Let me see the preparation. Show me the character traits you are building that will qualify God to grant you access to such wealth. You want to be an extraordinary leader? Show me those you are receiving mentorship from. You are moving around, not doing anything. Ladies, hear me. Don't be under pressure. The next thing in your life after school is not just marriage. Thank God for marriage. But build yourself. Focus on preparation than manifestation. You are not qualified to receive anything you are not prepared for. Preparation. Preparation. Settle down, prepare. Kata, kata, baladaba. Lord, you said you are going to give me the nations. Work on my character. Let me become an exceptional man of God. Lord, at this small level of ministry, they are already criticizing me. I can imagine the criticisms on great men like Papa Oyedepo and Adeboye. Lord, build me. You have already told me that my ministry will have branches all over the nations of the earth. Can I survive the criticism that takes, that, that having that kind of anointing will bring? Don't you know it's, it's, it's risky to be rich? Do you know the criticisms? Somebody will look at you and say, young people like this, they, they, they touch something. You are right. You are right. Nobody becomes rich just by doing nothing. They've criticized you small. Somebody just looked and said, I don't like Pastor Femi's shirt. And he's, he's angry. He's quarreling. He said, no, no, what is wrong with my shirt? Ah, and then you now want to be a leader over two million people you want to die ask Moses Moses the meekest man on earth he was angry and about to kill himself God said calm down that's how ministry is have you ever gone to God for prayer and God said no that's how it is so I hope you know that, that there is no breakthrough for this prayer it's how it works 
interesting friend who wanted to organize crusade one time. The guy was passionate about souls. He was not passionate about finances. So he wanted to organize crusade. I, after the prayer, fasting, visions, everything, he didn't even start because there was nothing to start with. He couldn't even start. I told him, I said, well, these are the logistics that are part of ministry. And he was so disappointed and angry because in his mind I was the sponsor of that crusade. I said, no way. God did not give me any vision. I am not the ram and the scapegoat you had from God. Flog out your way of funding that vision. Brothers and sisters, preparation is powerful. When you go through, you read books and you see how a man of God will tell you 12 years in his life, nothing worked. And then you say that I'm four years. That means there's hope for me. That means it's not unusual. It's not like I don't have faith. Let's continue going. You study about a man who built his conglomerate. He will tell you he built 20 companies and they failed. He was the 21st one that is the one that is blessing you. And you say, I just built three and they failed. Ah, there's hope for me. You are learning. Preparation is giving you strength. A time will come, they look at you and they say, You claim to be a man of God's wife. Look at your husband, his mouth is looking dry. You are not feeding him. And you say, oh, but husband, am I not feeding you? You didn't prepare. Because if you prepared, you would have studied other men of God's wife and they would have told you this thing is normal. So as they are insulting you, you just say, Oh, so that's how it is. Your spirit has been prepared. Anything you cannot take now is because you are not preparing. You will see a man of God lying down and think the place is cold. You lie down there and the heat will burn you because your skin. You know what they used to do for masquerade? They say they used to cook them so that nothing will happen. Allow preparation cooking. So that while somebody is shouting now and saying, do you know apostle is a herbalist? Do you, I know the woman that gave him power. And then you come and tell me as a, as a concern. I say, apostle, I respect you. They are spoiling your name and then I love <laughs> I would have cried in 2006 or 7 but now oh come on prophesy to yourself say myself grow up say it myself grow up there are many needless struggles we are going through because we are not prepared you are not the first to be criticized are we together you are not the first to go through challenges you are not the first to go through disappointment it's only because you have not studied others who had worse cases so you don't have a basis for comfort god is speaking to someone tonight preparation some of us are confused where we are now you don't know whether to start a church you don't know whether to start a prayer group you are not the first to start ministry go and examine the top 20 ministries how did they start there was a day it was in their mind did they start a church service bishop oyeriko did not want to start a church because at that time there were already too many churches based on him so your confusion about should i start a branch fellowship is because of your level and your thinking you are not the first to think like that when you learn that you will appreciate mentorship because you bring your mountain and somebody just walks on it and says, ah, is it this mountain? I remember 1981. Go and read the book. There is, there is a solution for that mountain. Oh, man of God, our ministry is about to be thrown out now. We are owing 30 million. I said, just 30 million, I'm complaining. In 1991, we were owing 500 million. And then you now sit down. You are hearing a man talking to you and he says, look, let me tell you what to do. Pray, give a seed, and go to bed nothing is as bad as it is and then you conquer that i remember when one time um we held a little program and i was going 30 000. 30 000. i was sweating i didn't know what to do with my life Thirty thousand. it was from one book money somebody loaned us it was so terrible i remember the day it was even late dr bimbo dukoya's books when they brought her to zaria 2005 after organizing the program now very nicely his presence in worship are we together now there was no i mean the whole thing and they needed the money by nine o'clock nine o'clock by seven o'clock i don't i'm not sure i had up to 500 i was sweating around i didn't know what to do so now you are owing eight thousand and you are moving around my blood i, I think i'm having high blood pressure calm down 
calm down. There is something preparation will teach you that you will stand up and walk. God is speaking to someone. It is comforting to see those who have gone through what you are going through times 10. Find out what they did to come out. Preparation. And Dotan became mighty, unmovable. Let me tell you, I have studied the life of men in ways you cannot imagine. Studying their life built great comfort in me. Many of them were 10 times as ignorant as I am now. Yet they were able to go through some things. And I said, no, at this level, I even know more. There's no reason why I should fidget. It will work. To work. You are not the first to get married. You are planning for marriage and you just say, ah, my budget is 1.5. Eh? Dr. Jenna, 1.5. You are seeing a man with two children. You will not ask questions. Sir, two children means you married. What happened? What did you do? You know, see, it's pride to think your problem is new to everybody. It's pride. What is a mountain to you is a valley to someone. You are not the first to have carryover. Hey, will I stay or will they drive me? Please go to bed. There are people who have taught this lad you are seeing. Left, right, and center. To a point that they just look at the board and say, glory be to God. Oh. Fear is as a result of ignorance and is partly a product of not preparing. You have ignored the pain and the sacrifice of others. Somebody's pain you have ignored is why you are afraid today. Because if you buy their materials and study their lives, you will learn their pain. Koinonia was not built in a day. Many of you have never cared to ask the story behind it because you don't care. All you know is that you are enjoying the Obi workers' dinner and it's free, paid for, just dress well and come. And you say, I like Koinonia, I like a ministry that takes care of us like this. There was a story. There was a story behind it. Preparation. You learn the principles of the kingdom. Preparation. That's the time of trial and error. Please hear me. That's the time when you are, you are learning to handle the keys of the kingdom. Like a baby trying to hold a key and open a door. You will use wrong keys. You will use wrong keys. It's in the place of preparation you will know how the anointing works. So God will keep building you. You will read the books. You will listen to the messages. Then one day you and God will go on small IT. Somebody will now say, please, Pastor Femi, can you just pray for our little group? And he say, ah, me? I mean, you are even calling me pastor. And then on that day, you will pray. Some things will happen, others will not happen. You will first go with confidence. You are fasted, dry. It's even dry, you went for the meeting. And then you go there, before you start preaching, somebody is already shouting. And you're like, eh, that means this thing is easy. Then every other person you lay hands on now doesn't fall. And I said, what's the confusion? I didn't lay hands on anybody. Somebody was shouting. The ones I now in direct contact with the anointing. So, preparation you now go back in one message you are hearing you will hear a mystery that explains that operation say, ah this is what i did wrong you have learned you are learning you are learning are we together you are learning about finances god told you you'll be a multi-millionaire ceo all that you've held home and abroad in your entire life is hundred thousand and you are working one day God will give you IT. Somebody will just send you 400,000 and say, please, can you keep it for me for two weeks? And you find out your body is shaking, you can't sleep. You will get up, you are moving up and down. You say, ah, should I touch this money and pay back quickly? You see a revelation that you are not qualified. You are beginning to see the effect of money. Then you learn from that preparation that money is a spirit. It's not just notes. It can do something to you. And you are now thinking, 200,000 is in my account and I cannot sleep. What will happen if 200 million is in my account? Then you begin to respect every man who you see sitting down. He's a millionaire but he's drinking a bottle of water. It took discipline to conquer that. What are you, what are you ignoring by refusing preparation? Is God speaking to someone? You are preparing. You want to be a good wife. In the process of preparation, 
you will read a book and see that a man of God's wife, she will now say, God told me. When God told me, my husband did not yet know. And God was sending me to women to go and cook with them. And you say, ah, the Holy Spirit will tell you now, go and do likewise. You will now say, ah, Auntie Shade, please, can I come to your house just to help you? And while you are washing place, you are asking her questions. And she's answering, what happens when a great man is angry? As a good wife, how do you treat, if your husband is a public figure, how do you shield him? You are not learning. You are only saying this brother, God has been speaking. You are not seeing me. You will never see you. Because God is not a wicked God to carry his servant laboring and just give you. No. You prepare. You prepare. Say amen. Stop claiming things carelessly. Sit down and prepare. And before you know it, you will see them in your hands. I respect people who are mighty yet understand the power of preparation. There are people you see in this koinonia, mighty men and women in the spirit. Very mighty. You just see them quiet. Some of them have had one-on-one -on -one encounter with them. They are prayer life fire. They are word life fire. The maturity and wisdom upon their life is uncommon. Nobody even knows them. They are quiet. God is preparing them. One day you just see God will carry one brother and give them and say, ah, where is this one coming from? Are you joking? Nobody comes from nowhere. People are preparing quietly. You are the only one standing where pe prepared people are standing, but you are not prepared. I receive grace to prepare. Lift your voice and pray. I receive grace. Lord, I see how I've been shortchanging myself. I've been acting like I've arrived. I've been trying to look rich. I've been trying to look anointed. By this teaching tonight, oh God, I receive grace. Grace, koinonia, pray. I stop complaining about what is not working. I value the pain of those who have gone ahead of me. And I make up my mind to draw from them. Shakata baratakaya. Leke prons kebariata lakoto supahaya. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A pastor sent me a text and the pastor was really complaining. He said, man of God, God is increasing us in ministry. But right now I just discovered every other thing in my life has died. My prayer life has died. My word life has died. I still see miracles. I still see great things, but I'm so disorganized. I used to be an organized person. And I told him, I said, you are still using the mindset you, you were using when you were starting ministry. Are we together? Do you know what it means for a very busy person to still maintain his prayer life? There is a technique. It's not just as the spirit leads. There is a system. How do you maintain a prayer life? Reading chapters of the Bible. When from morning till night you are walking. How do you balance that? As an influential person. You are married with two, three children. How do you maintain your spiritual life? How do you maintain a good fatherhood? And a, you're a good husband. You are not the first to go through it. Find out. There are people who are flawlessly effective. Find out. There are men of God who preach five, six messages every week and everything is new. You want, you are already tired. Your little fellowship in one state somewhere, maybe just two or three branches and it's already killing you. Yet people like Dr. Paul Enenche running six services every Sunday, two services every week, intermittently they can travel to Europe and come back in the morning, find out there is a system. There is a system, otherwise it will kill you. John G. Lake did not understand that. He did well in ministry and died in his family life. What is the secret of men of God who are effective in family? Their schedules are packed full, everything. I remember when we started, I didn't know that there was a protocol department that handled ministrations and made things easy. I used to handle them by myself. You bring your letter, you come and give me. I look at it. I say, okay, let me go and pray about it. At a point, there were several letters. I said yes to many people. I'll say, yes, I'm coming to your church. Yes, I'm coming to your fellowship. I will not even remember. I found out that I had to prepare four, five messages in a week. It was weighing me down. I said, it's not like I don't have what to say, but I can't stand before God's people and preach what I know God is not leading me to say. I can preach any nice sermon, but will it be effective? 
are we together what do you not know I'm drawing you to a point your pain today is because you have ignored preparation somewhere then I began to study. I got Bishop Oedeko's books, Towards Excellence in Life and Ministry. I got that Howard, that Howard Mills book, Church Administration and Management. I got some of the Adela's books, Pastoring Without Tears. I got some of these materials and sat down. When I began to study, I said, Ah, so this is how it works. I've been killing myself for no reason. Are we together? Killing myself for no reason. I remember when I had to be under pressure to answer everybody's call. It was like I'm a receptionist. Somebody will call and say, is this apostle? I just want to know. And for five minutes, you are arguing with the person. Is this apostle? If it's not apostle, please don't waste my time. And it's my credit. Oh. I'm now calling. I say, it's apostle. Say, oh, apostle, please, do you have time? Because what I'm about to tell you is, is boiling in my spirit. And I will now carry my big head and say, yes, I have time. And for 30 minutes, while you are talking, another text is entering, another call. And I find out that sometimes you can stay three hours. You are just answering call. And you are fagged out, you are fatigued. Someone who finish his work. He will work well, have a nice time with his wife, go to church and come back, then call you. That's when you now want to rest. Then others started calling by one or two. Because they found out that I don't sleep in the night. They will now call and say, Apostle, sorry, you. They just go ahead. I used to feel so guilty. If I'm sleeping and my phone is ringing, I feel so bad until I read a man of God's book that delivered me. Now it can ring. If it's an emergency, call the police. Yeah. People would threaten me and say, man of God, pride, pride. You've not gotten anywhere. You used to respond to us before. You even used to send us recharge card. But now you are, you are getting arrogant. I will feel so bad. I'll say, but God, please search my heart. Until I found out that that's how people are. It's not like they are just becoming it for me. They are like that everywhere. I just said, ah, please go to bed. Ah, somebody's already gaining wisdom. Gaining wisdom. So when you walk out of here and you say, see what she's wearing, you say, why does everybody hate me? No, you are not the only one. It's like that. You are just discovering it. You are just discovering it. I don't know why everybody talks about me. Everybody, is there something wrong? Ah, if, if you are looking at your legs, you will cut two of your legs because there are too many people who can talk. Ah, God is giving us wisdom. Preparation. 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 There are some of us married people, people come to your house, you are under pressure to cook for them and give them everything. Because let, let them not say we are not good. Let them say who? Oh. Let them say. Because you will find lousy people, they'll come to your house. Is there pepper soup in this house? You will think they are joking. They really mean it. You will rush, go to the market, buy, buy cow. You think it's just a joke. You are not learning to grow up. You need to listen to people who have learned to manage people like that. Two o'clock, they'll come again. They'll say, sorry, yo, we are here again. Is there still something for us? Then you will read a book that one determined young man one day walked up to them and said, please, visitor, we have, we have a program in this house. There are times we have Bible study. There are times I'm just spending time with my wife. There are times we are spending time with the children. It is important to let us know you are coming. Man say, what is there? What do you think you are? Leave him. Let him go. Carry his trouble and go. At least you are free now. There is something you need to know to set you free. Most of this depression we are having is because there's something you don't know. So you sit down there and think people are talking about you. What will they be saying about me? What would they say? Do well, they will talk. Don't do well, they will talk. So be used to it and enjoy your life. You see what preparation does for you. So you create a system of joy that is independent of the things around you. And you become a motivated leader. And everybody looks at you and says, wow, this guy is a leader worthy of emulation. Then your ministry increases because you have learned how to motivate people into excellence. Say amen. You have to learn the principles of the kingdom. Very quickly, there are four areas still under the second point. There are four areas that you must work on. Four areas. 
that you must work on number one you must contend for a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom generally as regards understanding the word of God and applying it understanding the word of God and applying it you must contend for that mystery you must know how to apply scripture to your life if you want to be great use your times of preparation to learn how to make the word of God work number two you must contend for the secret to the anointing in your place of preparation you must find out you cannot um, it has nothing to do with ministry you want to be great in life without knowing how the anointing comes you are joking so in your place of preparation you have to find out this anointing that has been responsible for the greatness of many how does it come number three you must find out principles of leadership and administration I know you are a man of God but you are going to have leaders I know you are a businessman but it will not always be popcorn forever a day will come you have companies with offices you must understand principles of leadership and administration number three you must understand finances you must in your place of preparation you must study finances no matter how much of a man of God you are a businessman a father you must this is a tool I'm mentioning for you the tools that you will use to fulfill destiny you need it study on finances don't just be a money monger don't just be a hustler don't just be obsessed about money and business understand the system understand how this thing works understand the challenges the vicissitudes that surround it are we together number four the last thing you must understand is people and relationships people and relationships brothers and sisters if you don't understand people and relationships you will die like a chicken they asked bishop Oyedeko years ago they said what's the greatest source of challenge and pain in your life he said people they said what's the greatest motivation in your life he said people do you know the reason for many discouragements is people what they have said the reason for your encouragement the same people you must understand people get my message understanding people mastering relationships and then the prophetic implication of association you have to learn that I got a book years ago that changed my life how to win friends and influence people by Dale Kennedy right it blessed me it opened my eyes to the psychology of human relationships it helped me understand people thoroughly to know how to relate with different kinds of people you need this in your life otherwise you will get a job and after two weeks you are angry with everybody because you will meet sarcastic people even as a man of God you are going to meet people in your church people who are very disloyal to you you need to learn what to do with them you are going to meet people who are very anointed but rebellious you are going to meet people who are very submissive but careless and less as fair all these people you have to work with them you get a job you are going to work with lazy people you are going to work with very corny people people who are corny they will bribe and kill you if need be for promotion you've got to understand the ethics of working with people maintaining relationships number three the last point action the last key to opening up your prophetic destiny is action the power of action so number one is an encounter with Jesus number two is the power of preparation number three is action the power of sustained action now by action I don't just mean movement action means the relevant steps that you take action takes courage write it down when you are about to take action over your life your business your ministry it takes courage to act brothers and sisters there are things you are going to be doing in your life you will be the first person to do it in your entire family it takes action it takes courage Joshua chapter 1 he said be strong and of good courage nobody has ever gone to school in your family you are the first to do it 
there is fear i was i was talking with i can't remember who i was talking with now we're discussing the subject of fear and i told him there are two dimensions of fear there is fear as a result of the presence of the spirit of fear there is fear as a result of stepping into the unknown you must distinguish them are we together now there is the fear as it is as the presence of a demon spirit you cast that one out God has not given us that spirit of fear but every time you are doing something new or something extraordinary that that ability to push through something that is new will bring fear it's not unusual there are many of us here who have gone through certain sustained seasons of preparation but action action are we together you are the first person in your house to get a job and for many months you have not submitted an application because you are used to everything being done free for you are we together you've not submitted any application and the lord is telling you stand up and go to benin and submit your application say ah god no 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 no. who is going to pay my money where am i going to stay you have to summon courage to get up and take bold steps in life are we together courage courage action requires persistence there are certain times your first step will be the wrong one but it doesn't mean you are wrong the step may be wrong but you are not wrong start the business start the church start the ministry action requires courage action requires persistence there is an ugly ideology in the church that the moment people start things and fail people rally around them are you sure it's god and they destroy people's destinies how many great businesses would have stood but for the advices from churches how many great destinies there are people who who left who left certain precious jobs that god gave them simply because of an advice if they are shouting at you like that is he worth it and then you leave it and now you are suffering are we together number three action requires a system now this is very important you don't just act carelessly you act based on a system you build a system you build a system around your action for instance when it's now time for you God has called you and God has anointed you and told you it's time you now sit down there there is a system you can start a prayer group a prayer fellowship as god is bringing people they are getting healed they are getting blessed god is lifting you god is bringing people into your life most of the people god is bringing are not your members stop calling them your members and sons and daughters they are your leaders in the making are we together god never sends members he sends leaders they will come as drunkards they will come as troublemakers your assignment is to prove your apostleship make them become what you have seen in the vision they will not come ready-made action you must build a system around it we had a system like that when he and i was starting we'll get people born again there was a system you got filled with the holy spirit and then we were praying and so when people got born again in one week they were already on fire A system around your business you may now say okay let me now build a system I separate business money from my personal finances maybe I open an account for business I need to be serious now not that any money that comes is for the eating you don't know which one is for your shop which one is for you so you eat everything and then you calculate and say somebody is stealing somewhere no no so I remember hundred thousand enter why is there sixty thousand you ate it it's your account system all the great empires in the world all the great destinies that you see the uncommon lives in ministry in politics in influence in any area of life were built this way this is the way people become great they have an encounter with jesus that encounter brings them to a submission to his values and the next thing they they plant themselves under a ministry or a platform or a spiritual family are, are you getting the progression now this so that when you get people born again you know what to do with them 
when people have an encounter with Jesus, the next assignment is to create a structure or plant them under, the Bible says, they that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. He said in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. Hallelujah. Just like you are seated now. Now you are hearing this. You are taking steps based on what I'm teaching. You will go back now. And because there is an anointing upon what I'm saying, you will not ignore it. As you go back, it will burn like fire in your spirit. You will begin to make decisions that are consistent with it. Are we together now? And you begin to see your life rise. You begin to see yourself improve. Then you can know that I'm going to be a good man. Not just because I think I'm good. I have studied the system that makes men good. Then I know I'm going to be a blessed man. Not just because I hate poverty. I've studied the system. I know I'm going to be extraordinarily anointed. Not just because I'm, I want to gyrate myself. No, 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 no. I've understood the system. At that point, you can look at life and smile. It's called mastery. You can rise to a point where you look at life and smile. And know that I have a great destiny. I have a great destiny. And you look at your life after 20, 30 years and it's nothing short of a life of glorious impact. On Eagle's Wings, a book written by Bishop David Oedeko, I think to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of living faith then or so, I looked at everything, the progression on how he started and I said, this is it. Consistent. I have studied many great men of God. That's how they started. Benny Hinn, Dr. Mike Mudok, Miles Munro, all the great men that represent great mentors and fathers in my life. I look at their lives and I see consistently, consistently. There were times in their lives they were for many years. It's like things did not happen. Even living faith with the kind of speed that it is experiencing now, there was a time it was stagnated. So you find out because at this point your ministry is not moving. So you go back. What did they do? Oh, they fasted. They prayed. They met together as leaders. They readjusted certain things. Fine. Papa Ie Adeboe, there was a time redeemed, was doing well, but it was taunted. And God told him that redeemed needed to get to all the nations. But as it were, redeemed could not cross certain cultures. It could not go beyond the south. And he went to the Lord. And then the Lord gave him a formula. He gave him a secret. Let him know that when you are dealing with global leadership, you must have respect for people's culture and ideology. It's quite selfish to want people to completely bend to subscribe to your culture. Kingdom culture, yes. But your, your sociological culture and paradigm, it may not be possible with every place. And so he opened up and painfully created that flexibility. So you can see one redeemed branch that looks like a contemporary um, uh, uh, church and all of that and then you see another redeemed branch youthful, another redeemed branch still, you know, holding on to certain values. He just focused on the core values that represented the foundation of the ministry to preserve it. But then gave the flexibility and now redeemed is everywhere. Festival of life in UK is as if, I mean, you see them everywhere there. France everywhere redeemed because of that secret. You can now look at that. Why is my church not growing? Ah, and God opens your eyes through that light. And you now see it. Oh, the reason why my church is not growing is because um, I, I, I hold on to my values, but probably I, I impose every value, both spiritual, cultural, sociological on people. And that value is restraining people. That may be just the key. You need to adjust. And then all of a sudden, you find out that your ministry becomes a habitable place for people. Action. Action. God is challenging some of us to take action. You need to take action over your finances. You need to take action. There are different action steps you can take. You can begin to read books every day. You can listen to messages every day. You can get up and subscribe to direct mentorship. As much as God grants you grace. You may need to settle down and tell yourself, I'm starting that business next month. I'm starting it. I have prepared. I have paid my price. I am starting it. I will start it. Or you can say this month of November is dedicated to scattering my CVs around. I will anoint it. I will pray. I brought it for miracle service. They have prayed for it. Now God is waiting on me. 
I will scatter it all around. Hallelujah. Action. We are enjoying koinonia today because of the power of action. We are enjoying what God has done today because of the power of action. Listen. When will the generations tied to your grace reap the benefits of the action you are taking or otherwise? Whether or not you move, time is moving. Whether or not you move, time is moving. It is important to move with it. Time is premium. The only way to redeem it is to use it well. You don't save time. You use it well. You redeem it by investing properly in it. Koinonia, I bring you a word today. There is a prophetic destiny for you in Christ. You have been escorting men. Some of you, after tonight, you've got to sit down. Brothers, look at me. After tonight, some of you, when you go back home, don't sleep. You need to carry a chair and sit down outside and just carry a clean sheet of paper and say, what am I doing with my life? This is not the way it's supposed to work. You have been joking around your destiny. You are getting old. Things are not working. There is nothing working in your life. Finances, you don't know anything about it. Fatherhood, you don't know anything about it. That sense of maturity, leadership, you've not built anything. Time is going. You have to give yourself a sense of urgency. A day will come, God will demand accountability for the grace and the life and the power and the strength that he has given you. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh. It's time for you to begin to study the Bible. It's time for you to begin to study the Bible. You want to become a great man of God. You don't know the Bible. You're going to crash land. You will be tired. Your members will be weary. They will leave your church and go somewhere else simply because you do not have the word. You are not instant in season. He tapped Elijah and said, eat for the journey is far. I want to round up. Are you preparing? Are you preparing for your life? Sister, are you looking for a man or are you preparing for marriage? Brother, do you want to marry by fire, by force or are you preparing? Marriage means a wife. Marriage means children. Marriage means the troubles that can come from in-laws. Have you positioned your spirit to manage it? Marriage means leadership. I want to start a business. CEO. CEO of what? Have you studied it? I want to become a great man of God. I want to be president and founder or geo. All that one is stories. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Are we together? Listen. I made a decision years ago. Today now makes it, um, not today, but 2016 makes it uh, 14 years. 14 years when I made a quality intentional decision. Now, I'd been working with God. I'd been doing certain things, but when I made up my mind to do what I'm teaching you now, 14 years ago, so when you see this today, it's a product of 14 years of consistency with the Holy Ghost. There were many other things that had happened before that time. But I made up my mind, I said, from today, I will not be irresponsible. From today. I started studying and making a decision over my finances and my journey 12 years ago. Two years after I started my journey with purpose, I started my journey with finances. Listen, not every time is conducive for everything. You must redeem the time. You hear me saying this thing, redeem the time. Please don't let anybody just come to your house and come and waste your time with gisting and gossiping that does not make sense. Early in the morning, you are supposed to be praying six o'clock there in your house because you stay in the same compound. Bros, how are you day? Then please, please. What, what is that shout? Please, I'm happy. Today's a glorious day. Make it easy. Bros, you don't cook. You don't do this. Just speaking, tell him, please. I plan to be a leader. Take it easy. All these your vulgar statements and the rest. I appreciate you, but take it easy. Don't come to my house and come and do everything you want to do. No. Be action. You begin to dress well. 
you begin to be serious about your life. Are we together now? Yeah. Actions that reflect your destiny. You stop excessively spending money anyhow. These are action steps that some of you need to take. Make up your mind that from today, no fake life. I'm not ashamed. If all I can take is Gary now, I'm not going to say others are taking rice. Uh -uh. By God's grace, I will take Gary honorably. Any lady that cannot like me taking Gary now does not deserve to eat my rice with me. I will continue moving. No pressure. No pressure. God has given me two members. I will guard them jealously and teach them with all my heart and love them. No competition. Are we together now? I open an account. I'm saving. I am disciplined. Can't be a student and you are buying with one of 10,000, 15,000. It's not wise. You are destroying your future. That 15,000 can buy you a book. 15 plus one secret to a happy home. I think something like that. Uh, uh, Dr. Mrs. Energy, 500 naira, 1,000. You change your life. Are we together? God blesses you with 10,000 naira. You go and buy materials and dress well. Dress well. You don't look irresponsible. Please, I'm challenging us. We are going to pray. But I need to be sincere with you. You look well. You dress smart. You start learning certain ethics. When you are going before the presence of a great man, you don't look foolish. You destroy yourself. Now you begin to learn that not every opportunity opens every time. There are some of you here, brothers, you don't have one good suit. One good suit. You can budget for it. One good suit so that the day God opens a door, you have something nice. You keep wearing all these rags that people wear around looking like fools. And then you smile around it. No, you will never be great that way. Are we together? You come to a point in your life where you begin to act responsibly. When you see ladies, you respect them. You don't talk like a fool, speak everything. And No, 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 no. You act like you are preparing to get married. There are some of you, I see you, you are still acting like children, although you are matured. You begin to act responsibly. You see someone's child falling down, you create a sense of responsibility. Oh, let me help this person. You are taking action that is opening doors for you. You see a man that is anointed, you don't just stand. Let's see what he's saying. Pastor Alpha, what does he even have to say? No. The law of honor. See, there is a way you look at someone, you know he has grown up. You know he has grown up. Are we together? Let's take steps for our destiny. You may not like what I'm teaching you tonight, but just like others who are saying thank you now, you will say thank you tomorrow. I guarantee you. You may not like me for what I'm teaching you now because for some of you, I'm challenging you. Listen, there are some of you, especially ladies, because you are very beautiful. Your beauty makes it such that anybody who comes around you likes you. So there's nobody to really tell you the truth. My name is Joshua Selman. I'm telling you, you have to settle down and be serious with your life. You cannot float around a destiny full of flattery. Somebody has got to tell you this is wrong, this is right. The person who challenges you is the person who loves you. God is using me to do for us now what some of us did not get at home. And I will do it well. You may not, if you like, don't hate me, no problem. But you will thank me tomorrow. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Stop all this childish play. Stop all these, these irresponsible things people do around. Gossiping around, misbehaving. Some of you, are, you have already collected phone on credit. Go and return it. You don't need that kind of lifestyle. Oh, please, hey, Jimmy, uh, can I use your trouser for two weeks? No, you are, you are acting like a child. Can I use your shirt? I like your phone. Can you borrow me? I'm traveling somewhere. All these things are attitudes of children. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I spoke like a child. Now that I'm a man, what do I do? I lay aside these childish things. Have you laid aside these childish things? Or are you just growing old? Maturity. Let me come into your room or your house or whatever and see it nice. I look at you and I see how careful you are. I don't come into your house and I see your fridge spoilt, your TV spoilt, your table dirty, your carpet dirty. 
and I just hear you say, ah, apostle, you are welcome, may his presence. No, 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 you are not showing responsibility. That's the same way you'll be an irresponsible man. The fridge will spoil, you say my wife will fix it. You are not already assuming responsibility. God cannot give you a great ministry. You can't fix your fridge of 1,000 naira. You want to fix lives? No, sir. Are we together? You wear clothes that are torn and dirty. You don't care? No, sir. You have to behave well. Say in the name of Jesus, from today, I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny. Say it again from today. I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny. Give me two more minutes and then we'll pray. How about bad friends? I can't round up without talking about that. Show me your association and I show you your true values. Show me your association. Whether you went to the same primary school, secondary school, it was your chief... Um, 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 your, your best man whatever <laughs> love you God. what does say chief bride mate praise God all this solidarity to wrong friends you've got to make up your mind you see I've been saying this thing do you know some of us if only you can leave your bad friends your journey to a good life starts especially for us ladies especially for us ladies you love God but the moment you meet them, they come with their wrong ideologies. And then they force you to have to believe it. You just came back from church and now you are making up your mind, I will be responsible. And someone goes, hey, geez, they, oh, ladies, can I sit down? You know that's what you just repented of. But because of the presence of that friend, you say, Todd, just tell me. And you now keep listening. Before you know it, you go back to your vomit again. May God deliver you this night. The courage to let people know you are serious about your destiny. See, I don't know what is it. This our ego thing is what we have refused to take out of the way. If I tell this person, sorry, you are interrupting my destiny, they will feel bad. They will criticize me. So what? So what? Make up your mind. Are we together? Make up your mind. This night, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, make up your mind and say things will change. I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ. There are many other things we need to change about. Some of you have up to 20 relationships. Consciously, you don't care. To you, it's a symbol that you are a fine girl. Say, do you know all these guys are dying? I guarantee you, none of them will marry you. For you to be that careless with your life, they will ask you out. But when they are ready to marry, they will come to church. The brother will repent and dress well and come and look for a quiet lady who loves God. Every man, stupid or sensible, wants peace in his house. Are we together? Yeah. So some of us pride ourselves. There are good brothers coming. They love God. They fear God. They are coming. But you are there busy doing your emotional razzmatazz with all kinds of people. You are growing old. God will open doors for the brothers. The brothers you see today that cannot buy a good shoe, they will buy what will open your mouth tomorrow. And by that time, they will not be ready to marry you. They will marry people younger than you. Don't be angry. I'm sorry I'm saying this, but I'm challenging you. And brothers, don't think what I've said now is a license for you to be foolish. Because some of you deserve no almost forever until you do something with your life. Please, don't, don't ever use what I'm saying now as an endorsement to come and harass any lady. If you don't merit saying any no, um, they will bring you to me. You are going to meet me somewhere in the equation. Uh, we will meet and I will tell you, no, no, you are not, you are not responsible enough. It's as simple as that. She may not have the courage to tell you, but I guarantee you I will tell you. You know why I'm doing this to you tonight? I came with this spirit of fatherhood tonight because I, I want to challenge you. You're on your way to better days. You're on your way to better days. Every marriage you see here, by God's grace, some of our people here who are gloriously married, there were steps they took. Some of the things you are seeing here, the lives that are successful in ministry 
by God's grace you belong to a ministry that God has helped these are the things that we do they are not what we are saying they are things that we do he said that which you have seen me do among many witnesses do also do also be serious with your life I can count the number of times you will come to my place and find me sleeping sleeping, snoring any time of the day I'm awake doing something there are sermons to prepare there are videos to watch I am, I am so passionate about eradicating my ignorance so passionate Please rise up on your feet. You're on your way to paradise. Three prayer points. Please, no moving around. We're going to pray. This is part of the meeting. I want you to pair yourselves into two. And let's just take five minutes to really pray. If you're married, please, you can hold your wife or husband, whatever, and pray because this is a serious prayer we are going to pray now. Shaka Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit in one minute. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Lo, I come in the volume of the book pray in the spirit shake up a badawa like a take your top brass cover and a ballad of us and pray take a take a telecata hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number one Lord, I vow, I make a covenant with my destiny, a covenant of seriousness and purposelessness. From today, I make up my mind to be serious and to be purposeful. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray, young and old, male and female, those following online. I enter a covenant with my destiny. I must fulfill destiny from tonight. I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus. No more joking. No more playing games in my life. Shake up to Kaparada Balana Balana Bos. Embrace the Ketesh Kola Baba Baba. Rakata Rakata Labata. Seke Tete Tete Lebos. Hallelujah. Please make sure you pray. Those outside, make sure you pray. Something is happening. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray and say, Lord, every knowledge I need, every light I need, to prepare me for an extraordinary life. Please reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. The information I need. Access to light. Are you praying? Take away ignorance. Financial ignorance. Ministerial ignorance. Leadership ignorance. Take it away from my life. Spiritual ignorance. I bring it to the cross and I decree and declare that there's supernatural grace to work it out. To work it out. To work it out. Prayer point number three. Prayer point number three. Oh God. The spirit of laziness and inertia, that spirit that refuses me from being diligent, I curse it right now in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. I challenge laziness, spiritual laziness, mental laziness, physical laziness, wanting something for nothing. I curse that spirit. Grace. 
grace to be diligent. Grace to be valuable. Grace to invest in myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Father, destroy premature, the appetite for premature manifestation. Manifestation when I'm not ready. Destroy that appetite from my life. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Premature manifestation in business. Premature manifestation in ministry. Premature manifestation in family life. Premature manifestation in leadership. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace to prepare like Jotham. I prepare my ways before the Lord. And so I work strong and mighty. For preparation, hallelujah! Hallelujah. The last prayer point before I pray for you the courage, the discipline, and the diligence to take necessary action because some of you the season you are in now is the season of action you can't prepare forever you've got to step that spirit of fear that lack of courage what will people say i'd like you to lift your voice and destroy it right now lift your voice and pray lord it's time to take action over my finances it's time to take action over family life it's time to take action in ministry. The action that will move me over my career, over my job. It's time to take action. Please lift your hands. Let me pray for you. I want to pray for you sincerely from my heart. I want you to believe it. God sees my heart whom I serve. And God knows that my greatest desire, listen. My greatest desire, I have always frowned at the leadership paradigm that makes one person a superstar. Shining while the rest are helplessly. Everybody can shine. It will not kill the honor of the leader. If you are a true leader, even in the greatness of the people you have raised, they will honor you and give you your place. There are many leaders who are not passionate. I made a vow with God when I started ministry. When Koinonia started, I've shared it with you. I will never pastor people who are not influential. I believe you can be anointed. You can be spirit-filled. You can be responsible. You can be financially free. You can be influential and useful in the kingdom. You do not have to choose one area. You can choose everything. You don't have to choose prayer and the word and neglect responsibility. You don't have to choose excellence and responsibility and neglect the ministry of the spirit. All of them are supposed to be complementary. So all these teachings that you see, I bring them, some of the teachings are hard, but they are designed to file our lives into action. The Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. Are we together now? So as you receive this word, don't sit down arguing it. Don't be offended by it if it strikes you. The idea is to receive it into your spirit as the word from God. And know that this is coming from a leader that is passionate about your success. If I see you today excelling and doing great things for the kingdom, it's my fulfillment. You give me money today, I'm blessed, but I mean, what do I do with that one? But if I see your life transformed, you're a great man of God doing mighty things for the kingdom. That's my source of joy. My paradigm is not outshining people and having people struggling around. And then one superstar called Joshua Selman. My desire is to be the least even among everybody rising. It still will not destroy my worth. Lift your hands. 
in the name that is above all names, I pray for you. The grace that God supplied in my life that granted me the discipline to prepare, I am still preparing, but the discipline to have started that journey regardless of the challenges, I pray for you. May that grace come upon your life. The spirit of indiscipline and carelessness I declare that it lives your life this night and forever. Some of you, the spirit of slumber and gluttony, food and sleep that is robbing your destiny, be free from it this night. Some of you, inferiority complex, the, the pressure to look successful, the pressure to belong, is making you to do a lot of things. You've done too many foolish things. The change comes for you now. Some of us, the pressure of association. I want to become like my friends, my contemporaries. That, that pressure to, to fit in a group that is destroying you. I command that pressure to leave you right now. For some of you, the embarrassment to start again. The embarrassment to start again. After life has whipped you, your business may have failed, your ministry may have failed, your career may have failed, you, are, um, you applied for a job, you try to ask a lady out. The, the, the courage in the name of Jesus, I declare that grace for you again. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. May you begin to access deeper levels of revelation. May God lead you to the books. May God lead you to the messages. May God lead you to the conferences. Where your anointing and your wisdom is waiting for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you do not know now that is responsible for your fears responsible for your concerns I pray that the light of God's word will swallow it right now the grace to go back to your drawing board the unashamedness to carry those books you used to write in that you have thrown away those dreams you used to write in some of you had books God used to speak to you every night but just because of little results you threw them may you go back and get those books again The culture, listen, the healthy spiritual culture you observe that brought you this far, I release grace for you to continue it. Some of you, the prayer life that brought you this far, you have left it now. The word study life, the humility that brought you this far, you have left it. The sense of honor for authority that brought you this far, you have left it. Please, whatever you have left that you should not leave, I command get back to it in the name of Jesus. I speak over your life. What has not been done in your family? The limitations that they have put and say this family cannot cross this. I prophesy to you, you are the one who will cross that barrier. In the name of Jesus. And I speak finally to everyone here who is discouraged. Drop your hands down. I'm speaking to you. There are people here who are discouraged. They're saying, Apostle, I have tried. Things are not working. As I'm standing right now, I don't even know the name of what I'm doing with my life nothing is working finances zero marriage zero school zero work zero nothing is working i feel as if i should just die i bring you a word from the lord he said is there hope for a tree right even if it be cut off he said there is hope for it at the scent of water the water of the word of god that you are hearing tonight may hope come alive I release upon you the courage. Some of you have thrown the button. I want you to take it back and say, no, I will make it. I will make it. Like an Olympic person who has been handed over the battle and now you left it. The problem is if you leave it, 
all the other people who gave it to you will also be failures because of you so you have to finish it grace to finish well in the name of Jesus Christ now very quickly before we round up please keep standing everybody no moving around there are people here you've heard the word that I've said please keep standing everybody there are people here you have heard the word of the Lord and while I was teaching listen please the Holy Ghost began to speak to you and said apostle is talking about you you need to make your ways right with Jesus two groups in one some of you have actually made a decision for Jesus at one point in your life but there is complete spiritual unseriousness and lukewarmness based on my definition here you see that you are not born again you may have come to recite a prayer but sincerely you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom and then there are those who have never truly made a confession for Jesus. You've been around Christian things. But as you began to hear me teach, the Spirit of God told you this is it. This is where I've been trying to lead you. You are a great man. You are a great woman. This is where I've been trying to lead you. I'm going to give you a few minutes. Our time is up. And wherever you are, there are many people outside. I believe many people inside and thousands following us online. The beginning of your journey to destiny starts with an encounter with Jesus. I want you to please walk out here. Don't waste our time. No sitting and thinking about it. I want you to walk and come here and say, man of God, pray for me. I want to start all over again. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. I know you heard the word. I know the Holy Ghost spoke to you. Rebels don't run away from him. Rebels don't come to him. Sorry. They run away from him. Keep coming. No cajoling. No cajoling. Jesus is calling you. Those outside who are waiting for you. Don't say we came with a family. They are seeing me. Tonight is nobody's business. Those online, you may not be able to walk and come here, but I guarantee you, you can open up your heart. You are about to make a decision for Jesus. He said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. I still believe there are more people. I still believe there are more people outside. There are still more people who need to make up their minds and say, Jesus, I come to you genuinely. I'm tired of faking it. I mean business with you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Look at me. That I'm leading you to make this decision does not mean I'm better than you in any way. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It is a genuine decision that will begin your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do not be ashamed. Listen, I'm serious with what I'm saying. There are still two people outside. The Holy Spirit is telling me they have to come out here. Come out. Come and join them now. Come and join them. There are still two people outside. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me. There are two people outside, 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 outside. The Holy Ghost, please don't waste our time. God is speaking to me. There are two people outside that you should come and join. I'm just giving you the word. Whether or not you come is up to you and God. But the Lord is telling me there are two people that he has spoken to them. Come and join them quickly, quickly. Now, those of you in front, listen. God bless you for your courage. Hallelujah. Listen, God does not condemn. Men condemn. Religious systems condemn. But in Koinonia, the first of our core value is love. I don't care what you have done. I don't care how bad it has been. God can give you a new beginning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But make sure that your coming out here is not an emotional decision. The grace and the strength of God is available for you. But you must make up your mind. Lift your right hand to heaven. Jesus is here watching you. Take away Joshua Selman from your mind and see Jesus, the Lord of your life, giving you a new beginning right now. Say after me, seriously and sincerely, say, Jesus, I have come to you, the only one who can help me. This night, I hand over my life to you. I've tried managing it by myself and it has not worked tonight I hand over my life to you be my savior say it be my lord I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that from today I open up my heart for change I open up my heart for transformation I declare that I'm a child of God I am born again the things I used to do I do them no more the grace of God 
is at work in me keep your hands lifted father these ones have come sincerely from their heart some of them are crying they have come before you the fountain of life some of them are giving their hearts to jesus for the first time some of them have heard me speak and they are making a genuine decision lord i stretch my hands towards them i decree and declare that the power of sin the power of the flesh the power of darkness is broken over their life they have exercised their will may your spirit find expression in their lives in the name of jesus christ from today grace for you to live a victorious life in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for making this great decision i want you to follow someone there's a gentleman waving his hands please all of you in concert just follow him they will have their your details and will follow you up and then please hold on tuesday on tuesday tuesday this week now please by four o'clock all of you should be around for our prayer meeting at um rema four o'clock tuesdays when people get born again the system here is that you should be part of the prayer department for at least one month it will help your spiritual life praise the lord may the lord bless you appreciate them everyone thank you thank you trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.